Alright boys and girls, I hope you're all having a lovely day, okay? Today boys, I felt like going through my PS5 collection. I've recently been playing my PS5 quite a bit lately, like I've been doing a lot of streams with my PS5, I've just been in general playing it. So yeah, I've just been slowly building up a nice little PS5 collection, so I just thought, you know what, fuck it, let's, ju let's just show you guys what I've got. I know some of you guys have probably got PS5s yourself, and you're probably wondering like, what, what games can I get for this console? So hopefully today I can show you a couple of nice little games that you might want to pick up. But yeah, I think I've got 25 games in total, lads, physically on the PS5. I do have two games digitally, those being FIFA 22 and FIFA 23, because for some reason, if you want to get the early access versions, you can't get them physically. You have to buy the digital deluxe edition, and obviously I kind of need it early, because, you know, FIFA is like my main channel, it's kind of like my job. So I don't own those two physically, but everything else I own physically. I, I love to own physical games. So let's start running through them, boys and girls, and we're going to start off with, we're starting off with Kenna Bridge of Spirits. And I'm just going to say this right now, boys, I think this is one of the most underrated PS5 games out there. Like, seriously, I don't hear anybody talk about this game, and I think it's amazing. Visually, it's probably one of the most impressive PS5 games. Like, the game is absolutely stunning to look at. It has really fun gameplay. It's surprisingly challenging, even though, like, you know, you would look at it and you think that it kind of looks like a kid's game. It, it, I mean, it doesn't play like one. It plays pretty hard. It's just a really, really fun game with a nice little story. I really enjoyed this one. I, I, I need to replay this. I've already beaten it, but I, I really enjoyed it, and I definitely recommend it. Okay, next up, boys, we've got Hitman 3. Okay, now, I played this one on stream uh, when I first got it. I remember streaming this one on Twitch, and I had an absolute blast with this game. It was genuinely one of the most hilarious games I've ever played. Like, it was just, it was genuinely funny, just some of the things you could do in this game. What happens if I just beat them up? Yeah, if you've ever played a Hitman game, you, you kind of get how these go, okay? You, you just assassinate people. They're really, really enjoyable. Is it the best Hitman game in the world? I'd probably say no. I do prefer other Hitman games, but I still think it's super fun, and I would, again, definitely recommend this one. Okay, what do we got next, boys? We have got Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Now, this is a one that I'm a little bit lukewarm on. I bought this when I first got the PS5, and I was pretty much just going to buy anything on the PS5, you know, just to have something to play on it. I picked this up, uh, you know, just thinking, oh, it's Call of Duty, you know, you, you have a bit of fun with that. But I won't lie, lads, I didn't really play it that much. I did play through the campaign. The campaign was genuinely good. I really liked it. It's like a follow-up to the original Black Ops, which is one of my favourite Call of Duties ever. So the campaign to this game is absolutely fantastic. I won't lie, I didn't play any of the zombies. I don't think I played a single game of zombies. It's not really my cup of tea. But I did play some multiplayer, and I just couldn't really get into it. So yeah, campaign for this one, absolutely fantastic. Other than that, it's kind of a bit meh. Okay, what have we got next, boys? We have got Alan Wake Remastered. Now, this is one, lads, so I, I've played most of these games here, but this this is one that I haven't actually played yet. In fact, I was going to play this like a few weeks ago. I was actually getting ready to play it, but uh, what actually put me off of playing it was hearing that Alan Wake 2 was not getting a physical copy, which really surprised me. I saw the trailers for Alan Wake 2 and it got me really excited. I was like, okay, I'm definitely going to play Alan Wake Remastered. And then again, hearing about it not getting the physical just kind of put me off the game entirely. I don't want to play with you anymore. I will play this eventually, but yeah, I was just pretty sad about the fact that Alan Wake 2 is not getting that physical release. It just, I, I don't know, it just, it looked really good. I was really excited to pick that one up, but I probably won't get it now. Okay then, boys. Next up, we have Resident Evil Village. Okay, now this game is absolutely amazing. And again, did I stream this game or did I... I don't think I streamed it. I oh no, I did. I did do a one stream of it. Is it the best Resident Evil game in the world? Probably not. I definitely prefer Resident Evil Seven. I definitely prefer Resident Evil Two Remake. I definitely prefer Resident Evil Four, etc. But it is still an absolutely amazing Resident Evil, lads, and it's definitely one of the best games you can get on the PS5. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say about it. You know, if you played Resident Evil, then you're gonna like Resident Evil Village, and you, you probably played it anyway. Okay, boys. Next up, we have got Callisto Protocol. Now, in my opinion, lads, underrated. Really, really underrated. I was recently playing this one on stream, okay? I was playing through the DLC and I just really like Callisto Protocol and this game got bashed a little bit when it came out. I say a little bit, quite a bit. But I honestly really enjoy it, boys. This is like one of my favourite PS5 games. I'm not even joking. I realise it's not perfect and it's, it's definitely got its flaws that's for sure, but I just, I don't know, the atmosphere of the game is great. I really like the gore in this game. Like, this game is just so ridiculously gory and I love that. And it's a really fun game with a really compelling story. I, I just really enjoyed it and uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend it. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea and I know not like everyone's gonna like it but me personally I loved it. Next up lads we have got Dying Light 2. Now this is a bit of a mixed bag game. The gameplay for this one is honestly like so good okay the parkour in this game is just mwah. They're just absolutely amazing and the combat as well in this game it's also great you know I like the combat in this game you've got loads of weapons you can do it's, it's great you know it's good fun the gameplay is super fun. What I don't like about this game though is the story the story to this game is painfully bad like it is so boring. This sucks. 
It's really bad. It's horrible. It's actually painful. It got to a point where about halfway through the game, I was just skipping through the cutscenes. Okay, I, I I tried to like get, listen and get into it, and I just couldn't. I was on, I was falling asleep just looking at the fucking cutscene. Like it was that like none of the characters are good. It's just a bad bad story. Really boring. But yeah, I definitely recommend it, but just skip through that story, boys. Okay, don't even try to pay attention to it because you were just wasting your time. I, I promise you, there's nothing compelling about it whatsoever. Okay, what have we got here then, boys? We've got Shadow Warrior Three. This is one of my most recent pickups. I picked this one up about a week ago, lads. I'm a massive fan of the Shadow Warrior games. I love the Shadow Warrior on PS4. I played Shadow Warrior 2 as well. Loved that. So I knew I had to get Shadow Warrior 3, and I was really excited the fact that it was getting a physical. I absolutely love this game, lads. It was so fun, okay? I played this entire thing in one day. Like, literally, I, I think I sat through it and just played it in one sitting. I enjoyed it so much. It's got, like, a sort of Doom Eternal-style gameplay. Like, it's just that kind of, like, arena shooter. It's got really over-the-top guns and just, like, loads of gore and it's just a super super fun sort of old school shooter definitely recommend this one lads if you if you like your first person shooters it's definitely a, a really fun game next up lads we have got ratchet and clank rift apart okay this is one of the earlier ps5 games i picked up i was really really excited for this one when it came out because i absolutely loved ratchet and clank on ps4 and how did i feel about this one lads i liked it i liked it quite a bit did i think it was the best game i've ever played probably not but i i did enjoy it i prefer the ps4 one but it was still pretty damn good i'd say the weakest part of this game was probably the story the story was a bit, eh, like the characters I just think were a bit, yeah, you know, they, they, they're not bad, but they're just a bit, I don't know what's the word, they just don't, they're too nice, like, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, gameplay in this is absolutely fantastic, it's, it's, I mean, it's classic Ratchet and Clank, you know, if you've played a Ratchet and Clank, you know what to expect, so yeah, definitely recommend this one, lads, if you're a fan of Ratchet and Clank, and uh, yeah, just super, super fun game. Okay, next up, lads, we have got The Quarry, now this is a strange one, I don't know, uh, how do I explain how I feel about this one? So if anyone's ever played Until Dawn, this basically plays exactly like Until Dawn. It's a horror game where you sort of make the decisions for the characters. I love those types of games personally. I really enjoy them. Some people say they're like basically movies, which they're not totally wrong, but I personally enjoy them. But when it comes to the quarry, lads, I definitely prefer Until Dawn to the quarry. Until Dawn is, is a lot better in my opinion. But I do enjoy this game, lads, but I only enjoy it after, I'd say, about three chapters in. The opening few chapters are painful to play through because the characters are just so unbearable. I know you're not supposed to like love these characters because you know some of them are gonna die and that's kind of the point but uh they were really like really cringy. I genuinely wanted to like kill off half the characters in this game because I, I just was like I didn't like any of them. <laughs> the first like good few chapters into the game like when you get past all of that bullshitty cringe stuff it, they actually become slightly more likable and even the ones that don't become likable are fun to just kill them you know because you can basically make them die you know if you make the, the decisions for them so yeah this was a bit of a weird one for me lads like I said I wasn't enjoying it until a couple hours in but uh once it got going and people started dying off and stuff I started to really enjoy it okay next up lads we have got Horizon Forbidden West okay now I will say one thing about this game boys stunning okay one possibly the best looking PS5 game. If you like your graphics and you want to see what the PS5 can do, you got to pick this game up, okay? Because there is, there's probably no better looking game than this. But in terms of the actual game itself, do I like it? I really like the gameplay to this. Uh, the gameplay is fantastic. The story, on the other hand, eh, it was kind of a bit meh. It's not exactly got like a bad story or anything, but it didn't really like, I kind of just forgot about it after I finished it. I kind of find the characters a little bit cookie cutter as well. Like they just, uh, they're just a bit meh, you know, a bit bare bones. I also find Aloy just a bit of a lame like main character i don't know what it is she just feels like she's got like a, the most wooden personality but yeah the gameplay to this lads is great okay you kill all these robots that's super fun i super enjoyed that you know it's a great open world beautiful game i just didn't really connect too much with the story and i and i, I would say the same about the original one on the ps4 but yeah definitely a solid game lads just wouldn't say it's like my favorite or anything okay lads next up we have got one that again is a very recent pickup okay and you'll know about this one lads if you've been watching me stream and that lads is aew5 forever okay now i really really like this game okay this game is sort of divisive between people. I've seen mixed like reviews on it. I've seen people give this like, as low as a five out of ten. I've seen a lot of people give this like eights out of ten. You know, I've seen uh, like a divisive opinions on it. Me personally, though, I've had a lot of fun with this. Again, I streamed it. I made a video on it. I, I really, really like the game.
gameplay to this. I will say the one thing that I'm not a big fan of is the lack of content here. Like, I, there's just not that much to do on it. That is right now, though, lads. I know they're working on stuff. I think we've got Stadium Stampede coming for this, and uh, there's definitely going to be more content. But yeah, I've played through the career mode about three times now, lads. Obviously, I did one on stream, and then I played a couple more times. I played one with John Moxley, and I did another one with Kenny Omega. And I was really enjoying it, you know? It's, it's a great game, but again, I just wish there was a little bit more to do. All right, boys. Next up, we have got Stray. Oh, man, I love this game. Stray. Oh, what a game, boys. What a game. Now, I will say this, lads. I didn't think I would like this game as much as I did, because I'll be honest, I don't really like cats. I think I think cats are shit. What did he say? What the fuck? What the fuck? Shit! Me, Percy, boys, I'm a dog man, okay? I love me some dogs, all right? I, I'm not a fan of cats. I'm, I'm, I'm all about the dog love. So when I heard about this game, I was curious because, I mean, who doesn't want to play a video game when you play as a cat? Like, that just makes me, you know, want to play it because, like, what the fuck? Again, I didn't think I'd connect with it as much as I did because I'm just really not a cat person, but uh, I really enjoyed it. I just, I don't know what it was, boys. It was just a really, really nice game. It's not very long, lads. You can finish this one in, like, I don't know, three, four hours. It's, it's super short. Yeah, I just really, really enjoyed this one, boys. You know, I put my headphones on and the music to this game is really soothing and chill. The atmosphere and the vibe to this game is amazing. And it's just a great game. Good story. Uh, you know, even though there's not like spoken dialogue in it, the story still conveyed super well. And I definitely recommend this one, lads, if you can pick this one up. Okay, it's it's so much better than it should be. Like a game you play as a cat, like should not be this good. But I promise you, it definitely is. It is amazing. Okay, next up, lads, we've got a big one. Okay, and that is Elden Ring. Okay, now I know a lot of you guys are a big fan of this one. And so am I. I mean, it's Elden Ring. Who doesn't? love this game. Now, I'll be honest here, lads, I didn't get this one as soon as it came out. I wasn't planning on buying it, in, in fact. And the reason for that, lads, is I've never really connected with the Dark Souls games that much. For me, I love Sekiro. Sekiro is my favourite game of all time. I feel like I've said it a hundred times on this channel. But Sekiro plays completely differently to the Dark Souls games. Like, the style of gameplay is just so different. But after hearing from, like, a billion people how incredible this game was and how it was just a must-play game, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna give it a go, okay? I thought I'd just at least try it because you know worst case scenario I'll just trade it in if I don't like it and to my surprise lads this was the first sort of dark soulsy type game where I just fell in love I fucking loved it from start to finish I pretty spent about two to three weeks on it I didn't really play anything else I just was absorbed by this game and it was it was just phenomenal so yeah I would definitely recommend this one lads but that kind of goes without saying because it, I mean it's goddamn Elden Ring who doesn't recommend this game next up we have got oh yes this is a good one okay Plague Tell Requiem oh my goodness me I love this game now I played through the first one of this on the PS4 probably about I want to say maybe two years ago I played it through and just absolutely loved it okay and obviously this sequel was on its way so I was super super hyped for this I did a very rare thing here boys I pre-ordered this game I very rarely pre-order stuff because you never know how things are gonna you know because you get your cyberpunks where they're just they turn to shit but my gut was telling me that there was gonna be no issues with this game lads and uh, yeah it was I'm glad I pre-ordered it because this was an incredible sequel I mean it was probably better than the original and again I love the original but yeah the story to this game lads is just moi, absolutely a 10 out of 10 story Story. characters incredible gameplay is great as well it's a lot longer than I thought it would be like it's probably about twice the length of the original which was quite surprising and despite that extra length it never really got boring to me I just I absolutely loved it boys it was an incredible journey and if I recommend any games here definitely this one I would 100% recommend this one and definitely play the original as well if you haven't all right boys we've got a lot of heavy hitters going on here next up we've got Resident Evil 4 remake we are just we're we're, we're like knocking it out of the park with games lately these are all the big boys so yeah we got this lovely little still book edition here boys look at that lovely little still book and again similar to playtale i pre-ordered this one again i don't do that often but i knew this one was going to be good boys because i mean it's resident evil 4 you know like i i love the original i've spoken about it quite a lot on this channel how much i love resident evil 4 and uh, yeah the remake is just incredible absolutely i mean there's nothing to say because it's been said before already just absolutely 10 out of 10 remake you know capcom just know how to do remakes really well this motherfucker don't miss that motherfucker don't miss man what is going on here lads we've got another absolute heavy hitter. We've got God of War Ragnarok. I've just clustered together all of my, like, favourite games here by accident. But yeah, God of War Ragnarok, boys, is my favourite PS5 game. There's no other way to say it. I love this game. I'm an enormous fan of the God of War series. I love literally every single one, pretty much. I just I just find that ev everything about it amazing. The lore, the story, the characters, all of them just so good. And for me, lads, God of War Ragnarok is, like, the magnum opus of God of War games. It has ebbs. It just has absolutely everything. The story is 10 out of 10. The character 
characters are so well developed like you've got amazing gameplay like there's literally everything you'd possibly want in a video game right here there's just so many good memorable moments in this game like it's just incredible like the first fight with thor where you like die and then he brings you back to life like i remember like having that moment play out and i was getting goosebumps just how crazy it was genuinely one of my best gaming experiences was playing this one right here boys i i just loved it i couldn't stop playing it when i got it and it was just it was such a joy to play okay boys next up we have another recent pickup okay and that is star wars jedi survivor and i didn't pick this one when it first came out lads because i was a little bit broke at the time okay i just moved into this house so i didn't have the like the cash to buy this one so i had to wait a little bit but i managed to find a copy of this on ebay for about 40 quid okay i finally got to play it. i was super super hyped for it because i love the original one and i won't lie lads it wasn't as good as i thought it was gonna be i didn't hate it by any means i still thought it was a great game don't get me wrong but uh i i heard a lot of people say that this was better than the first one you know on the ps4 but i have to disagree boys i don't think this is as good in my opinion like again boys don't get me wrong this isn't bad like everything about this game is good the gameplay is good the story is good the characters are good it's, it's a good game but i don't know what it is boys but the original one i i loved like i thought it was just better in almost every way like i just really connected more with the characters in the first game whereas in this game i just didn't connect with them quite as much as i did in that first one i also felt like the different worlds you would go to in the original one was a little bit better than this like i found a lot of the worlds you go in this game just a little bit more boring if that makes sense i don't know i just found the first one a bit better than this one so i was i was a tiny tiny bit disappointed because again i'd heard this one was better and more superior to the original so i was looking forward to a better experience but i i think i prefer the first one okay next up lads we got one that i haven't played yet unfortunately i've played again most of these games and this is one i haven't got around to playing yet and there is a good reason for it okay and that is yakuza like a dragon and as much as i would love to play this one lads i am trying to play through all of the yakuza games in order i've currently played yakuza 0 1 2 and 3 so i still need to play yakuza 4 5 6 uh is it se this is seven right I think this is seven. And then, and then there's also some spin-off ones I need to play as well. But yeah, I've got a lot of Yakuza games to catch up on, lads, which is the only reason I haven't played this one yet. But I definitely will when I really look forward to it because I've heard really good things about it. All right, boys. Next up, we have got Sifu, which we've got this lovely little steelbook. Look at how beautiful that steelbook is. Absolutely wonderful. Now, I do want to talk about this one, lads, uh, because I need to play this one again. The reason for that, lads, is that I kind of played this game on easy difficulty. What the fuck did you just say? Now, I know that's going to sound blasphemous to a lot of you guys. Like, Majel, how could you play a game like Sifu on easy difficulty? Like, what, what are you thinking? But I promise, lads, I do have a good explanation for it, okay? I didn't want to play it on easy. I wanted to play it on normal. But unfortunately, when I did pick this one up, I was really super duper busy. I was basically going on a lad's holiday for 10 days in Spain, okay? So I was preparing, like, tons of FIFA videos. So I just didn't have time to, like, game that much. But I still wanted to play this game. But I knew if I was going to play it on normal, I'm going to be dying a lot. And it's going to take me really... Really long and I just again didn't have the time for it so I thought let me play this game on easy difficulty just to experience it that way I can whiz through it with the limited time I have and I can at least experience this game and then I'll play it through on normal at a later date so yeah I want to play this one again lads on a harder difficulty okay because from what I played of it it was obviously super easy because I played it on easy difficulty whereas this game is meant to be really hard okay boys speaking of hard games okay we've got a very hard game here in Wulong okay this is another recent pickup of mine I'd heard from a lot of people that this was kind of like Sekiro and once again Sekiro is my favorite game of all time so as soon as I hear the word Sekiro and like then I know I have to try it okay and to be fair it is quite similar I will say it's pretty a bit more forgiving than Sekiro like Sekiro can be brutally hard at times this game is not quite as difficult but it did test my patience with a couple of them bosses boys okay there's some of the bosses in this game are pretty damn difficult there's also a surprisingly long game I know it's called Wu Long like I probably should have expected it to be quite long but yeah it took me quite a while to beat it lads it probably took me a good couple weeks to, to finish this one but uh, yeah absolutely fantastic if you like your difficult games that's definitely recommend it it's super enjoyable but yeah just a really great game with great bosses and great combat okay then boys next up we have got call of duty modern warfare 2 okay now this is uh this is one that i played a lot when i first got it and i haven't really played it like since to be honest like the first few months of this game i was playing the multiplayer and just absolutely having a blast with it like a lot of good call of duties you know i always play it for a, for a good couple of weeks solid and sweat it and have a good time but yeah i just haven't really been in the mood to come back to it like you know i just haven't played it since it pretty much released you know i sweat the shit out of it for a couple weeks or a bit longer than that probably a, a, a good month or so so yeah i just haven't really come back to it i've not played the campaign either i need to do that because i've heard the campaign's pretty good but yeah i don't know boys it's, it's pretty good it's a pretty good game but i mean it's just call of duty at the end of the day you kind of know what to expect here okay boys we're coming towards the end here but next up we have evil west okay now this is a game that i was really pumped for i was i was super duper excited for this one i heard a lot of people say that this was kind of like a ps3 sort of 360 era type game and when i hear stuff like that my 
on, I, I get erect. I got a motherfucking boner. So, uh, yeah, I was pretty damn excited for this one, boys. And did it deliver? I mean, yeah, it was it was a pretty good game. Was it as good as I was expecting it to be? Uh, not quite. Like, towards the end of the game, I started to feel a little bit repetitive with the gameplay. Like, it kind of just did sort of rinse and repeat the enemies a little bit. The story was pretty meh here. I wasn't expecting, like, you know, Quentin Tarantino level storytelling or anything. But it just, yeah, I don't know, it just wasn't that interesting. But it was still a super fun game, lads. It wasn't super duper long. It was, uh, I think it probably took me about eight to nine hours. Yeah, it's a pretty solid game and it did remind me of those PS3 era type games. So uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend it if you like these types of games. It's, it's good fun, good combat, just a little bit repetitive. Okay, next up lads, we have got Spider-Man Miles Morales. Okay, uh, this is a really, really short game. It will not take you long at all to beat this one. This is one of the first PS5 games I bought. I bought this with my PS5 and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good game. It's a very, very good game lads. I, I've said this before on this channel or I've, at least I've said it on streams before. Not the biggest Spider-Man fan. I like Spider-Man. I think the Tobey Maguire movies are good. I'm not a big fan of the MCU ones. I haven't really read any of the comic books, but uh, yeah, I mean, again, I like Spider-Man. Not my favorite superhero in the world, but you know, he's, he's pretty cool, I guess. But, yeah, this is a good game. It's, it plays exactly the same as the PS4 one, and the PS4 one is great, and uh, yeah, this is good as well. So yeah, I mean, you've probably already played it, so I don't even know why I'm talking about it. Okay then, boys, our final game is gonna be Life is Strange True Colors. This game is, is, is it's all right. It's not bad. Some of you guys are probably thinking, Michelle, why the fuck are you playing a game like that? I really liked the first Life is Strange surprisingly. I played, um... Oh, uh, what was it? Before the Storm, I think it was called. I didn't really like that one. I thought that one was kind of cringe and shit. But I'd heard good things about this one, so I thought, you know what? I'll give it a go, because again, I liked the first one. And yeah, it was it was pretty good. Not amazing, not my favorite game in the world, but it was it was a pretty good time. So yeah, boys, that is my full PS5 collection right there, okay? I hope you guys maybe found some new games to check out. I hope that this was at least slightly insightful. Yeah, I just hope you guys enjoyed me rambling on about video games for the last 20 or so minutes. So yeah, I'll wrap things up there, boys. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys very soon for some more juicy videos.